Good evening and welcome to the Towns and Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, October 30th at 6.35 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting to order and take a roll call. Cindy King is present. Sue Lissio present. Gordon Clark present. Thank you. And if you would join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'd like to announce that the meeting is being tape recorded. Is there anyone else recording the meeting this evening? Okay, thank you. Um, Chairman's addition, 1.4 Chairman's additions and deletions. We do have one addition, 410, which would be a uh, unit till application for, uh, application for a permit, which came in late. And we'll be talking about that in section four. Um, appointments and hearings. Item 2.1, we have maintenance supervisor Mar Mercurio regarding facilities updates. Come on up and... Hello. Thank you. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to introduce Brian Mayer, the new facilities person. Hey. He's been a firefighter in town for eight plus years. Yep. He's a great addition. He's already uh, he's done a ton of work around town and uh, made my life a world of easier so far. So um, I expect bagpipes and a ceremony momentarily. <laughs> Are they coming in? No. No. <laughs> no. No. No, no bagpipes for Brian. We're a little disappointed, but. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. So. Let me uh, just tell you what, what's going on in the last month. We've uh, passed our state elevator test at the police station. Uh, all the buildings that we oversee, uh, we've had our fire alarms, our annual testing, as well as extinguishes, uh, the septic, all, again, all the buildings, uh, facilities overseas, septics uh, just got emptied. We're working on one more police, which should get emptied next week. Um, boiler cleanings are done. Backflow tests are done. Uh, we're working with Galaxy to wrap up the police upgrades and uh, camera upgrades as well as access control. Uh, we're hopeful that we're going to wrap it up to a project walkthrough this Friday, Thursday or Friday. So hopefully that goes uh, smooth. Um, had a, t a few hiccups in that, but nothing major. Um, this next month, we're hoping to get some offices painted or at least start as soon as the colors are agreed upon, which is probably going to be the toughest part of the job. Um, also, next week we start access control for this building, Town Hall, which will be a, a little difficult, but we're going to start with the perimeters and then work our way in. Um, so we'll have what to... What changes are you going to be making on, on that? Well, well, I'm going to have to change all the lock cylinders on the perimeter doors when we do access, reissue fobs, um, so we can do away with all the keys, the old keys. Uh, so we're going to have to assign all committee members, or at least chairpersons of, of the committee, staff, um, rec, whomever uses the building, uh, we'll have to get a fob. What's a fob? I don't have my keys on me, but it's a little uh, chip that you wave in front of a proxy reader. Oh, oh. that's the street. That's a car. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, sure, what kind of car? So new modern. <laughs> if you could tell them what the fobs do, so that's they come in different, and they can also be a card. But you have a collection of them. I do. Yes. So that way we'll have better key control and records uh, of who comes and goes at when, what time. Not that it's Big Brother, but it's more accountability. So you'll have you, through our computer system. We'll be Absolutely. able to see who's entering the building and exiting. At what time. Okay. Yep, and we'll have programs so at 9 o'clock the doors automatically unlock. Uh, so, you know, uh, staff can get in early with their fob. And at 4 or whatever time we time it out, they'll lock back up. So there should be no more late night calls saying doors are left open or, or stuff like that. So, again, it's just better, uh, you know, accountability. Uh, you know, the fire station has it. Um, the Library Senior Center has it, as well as the police station. So it's, it's the way to, we're going. 
Good. And you said you're starting with the perimeter. Are you going to start doing the interior offices as well? Yes, probably not this fiscal year. So we'll probably add two to three offices a year for about three years until where everybody's accounted for. Good. Yeah, I thought so. I've been looking for it. I, that's been kind of a, I wish that I'd had that we had that kind of security because there's so many people that have keys. If yeah, were, and over the years. If there were damage or something missing, then we, we have no idea. Yeah, and over the years, like uh, you reassign keys or uh, I know you're not supposed to have their uh, a non-duplicate key, but they end up getting duplicated. Um, so this will give us better security, I guess you would say. Madam Chairman, if I may. Thank you. Mr. McCurry, you're much more of an expert at this, but you, could you explain that if we have an employee who retires or go to another job, that type of thing where we don't have to chase keys down, he can simply for whoever our sure. IT person is, that fob can be eliminated. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, we can delete. Yes. We do it at the library senior so center. If somebody, lose, uh, somebody recently lost their keys, so we just go in the system, we delete that or cancel that and create a new fob. So we have a record, but we also are not spending right. um, people hours. That's exactly um, right. Doing tasks that we could be doing other work. So yeah, and we don't have to, you know, change the whole locking thing. So <coughs> it's how every facilities are going. Thank you, Mr. Great. McCurry. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Great. So we're also working on uh, which uh, we're going to co-sponsor. Hopefully, on the fall town meeting with the AV. Been working with Jim and a couple other departments. The audiovisual at the library. It's, it's in desperate need of upgrades. You know, it's technology based. You know, we seem, and you know, my time here at Towns in 12 years, we seem to do things once and never add to it. You know what I mean? So I think uh, it's time to do these software upgrades. And, uh, you know, it's since it was installed, there was no HDMI cables because that wasn't a thing eight years ago. So now it's, it's time for an upgrade. So we're working on that. Uh, working on the lighting system there, we have to reprogram the lighting system. Again, it's all technology. It's things that we should be doing anyway. So, any questions, concerns, complaints? Mm -hmm. Manager? Not today. Okay. Do I talk about the grounds? Uh, oh. I know there was a change this year in how grounds were handled. Yeah, I think, um, again, my 12 years here, I think I haven't seen these grounds better in 12 years as well as facilities as well as grounds. It's been awesome. Shepco took over the contract. Uh, we did a bid mm, probably late spring, early summer. Um, they've gone above and beyond. Uh, they actually did a huge donation on the side of the library, kind of back corner of the police station um, with Sterilite and uh, Shepco. They kind of did, uh, did that retention area. They put cisterns in there, which redirect the water to its stormwater runoff that goes. We get clearance from conservation. Uh, they moved quickly on that. So uh, uh, the last part of that is, and we may have to wait till spring, is they're going to uh, extend my irrigation at no cost to the town, which uh, I love donations. Um, so uh, that, as well as uh, the fertilizer, has made a huge difference in town. I mean, I, you can't. I get more comments on how beautiful the grounds look now, and uh, and nothing to go against the cemetery and parks who was doing it. They just didn't have the the staffing levels, you know, or the time to dedicate to prune, to cut, to weed, uh, where Shepco completely uh, does it soup to nuts. Great. And you. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, Mr. Mercurio, I know you mentioned a lot about that, but also, just for the public out there, a lot of good stuff goes on they don't know, so the only reason I'm asking this question is, sure. in front of Cliffs, and correct me if I'm wrong, did they not do that whole island there? They did. All right, uh, which again, the would have been substantial cost to the taxpayers, right? Uh, Shepco goes above and beyond. Okay. Um, and uh, anything that's even a consideration, like, it's done. We have a couple other projects we're thinking about doing, um, but... I wait till they kind of get moving before we uh, jump on them. And so one more thing, one Madam Chair, if you don't mind, um, is that um, I've noticed when I drive around, notice thing is that I've noticed those employees when they're on town grounds, um, and I know you're a big safety person and working safe zones and that type of thing. I've seen them be 100% compliant with best practices for our safety of their equipment, of people, of, of uh, um, vehicles, that type of thing that with the town would be liable for. So mm. if you have a chance, with the permission of the chairman, could you just let them know that we appreciate not only their work, absolutely, but also that they're doing it in a safe and responsible manner. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. And, and again, they, um, they were so excited to get back at the library uh, pruning. 
things look spectacular there. You know, I was getting, every year we seem to be fielding a multitude of complaints over there and uh, they, they, they've really stepped to the plate. They've pruned everything, they've cut everything back, um, they weeded everything. It's just uh, next year is going to be a big year. Uh, Jim and I hopefully will be working on extending their contract. Um, next year they're going to pull, uh, redo all the beds and whatnot. When we're also talking about transplanting some of the shrubs um, where they just did that new, uh, when you go by you guys will see that where they filled in that retention area. We're thinking of transplanting them along the walk. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot going on and it's, this is probably the first time I can tell you I've made progress in every one of the buildings this year, um, which is awesome. Great, thank you. <clears throat> I know that in my, the different places I've gone around town just over the last several months. Yep. You know, sometimes you don't think about things, but I, but I have noticed that there's, it's looking nice mm. around town. And yeah, but we're getting there. Yeah. You know, and Brian's going to be a big part of that. When things don't look good, you notice it, but when it's nice, it's like, oh, mm, that, looks, that looks good. <laughs> in, in my field, most people talk to me when things are going wrong. Yeah. Not when they're going good, right. so. <laughs> right. You know, so. But thank you for the work that you've been doing. And, oh, you're and welcome. Good things to look forward to. So. Yep, yeah, like I said, uh, and uh, again, I can't thank Sterilite and Chep Cohen up for a lot of their donations. They, they're fully supportive of all the town, so uh, mm -hmm. I'm appreciative of that. Madam Chair, just briefly, Mark, an update on the police station um, yep. painting project, because I know last at the last meeting we did the award, so um, let the board know what's going on there. As of today, we haven't heard back from the uh, bid winner. Yep. So I think uh, we spoke. We got they got till the end of the week. If not, we jump to the next bidder. We already I've ordered Azac for a lot of uh, repair trim. That's that they're going to do. The paint is sitting right now at Apple Meadow. I didn't want to bring it over until a day before so we can shake it one more time. It's actually stained, not paint, uh, so I stand corrected. But uh, yeah, I think if uh, one of the crews come in, three days tops. Um, and as long as we get 50 plus degree weather, which it seems like in the, we'll be teetering on, we can get it done this year. We bought uh, 200 feet of AZAC. Um, so hopefully they can replace a lot of the, there's some, uh, Punky wood and rotted areas that we want to replace. Um, we did a, about three years ago. We replaced a bunch of it, and it's an ongoing thing until we get the whole building with that. It's called PVC wood, so it never needs paint or it'll never rot. So it's maintenance free. Great. So, yeah. So did you say that the the winning bidder we we haven't had? We haven't heard back from uh, since uh, so he was told awarded they won the bid. and they haven't confirmed that they're going to do the work. Mm -hmm. So hopefully by the end of the week. Oh. I've left two voicemails. We mailed the contract out at the beginning of last week after you guys had authorized it. We haven't heard anything. So how long do we have to wait? To end of this week. End of this week. The end of this week, and they're, they're aware, they've been notified if that. If they're non-responsive, I would think that would allow okay. us to move to number two. Okay. And the, uh, the other bidder, and correct me if I'm wrong. He did this building. Did this building probably about four or five years ago, which they did a great job as well. So. So one last thing, we just, uh, between our IT at the police station and our IT here at Town Hall, we set up uh, a maintenance uh, email. So Brian, myself, or Eno will be able to, once we get a computer, log in. Um, and we're trying to do everything electronically. So any work requisitions or issues, they can email us. And uh, uh, as of department head meeting, it wasn't working as smoothly, but uh, um, our IT guy at Town Hall is working on that as we speak. So hopefully by the end of the week it'll be up and going and uh, uh, and that goes for any resident as well as uh, um, staff member. It'll be uh, maintenance at townsandpd.org and uh, Brian, myself, or Ina will be able to open it any given day or we'll check it and it'll tell us what's... What kind of things would residents contact you about? Any issues with the ground or if they see anything, a light out in a parking lot or something like that? You know, because I don't often come around at night unless I have to. Um, so everybody's my eyes and ears. You know, like the library staff will tell me, oh, the light's out over here. And, um, so. Okay, good. Yeah. Again, questions, concerns? Anybody have anything? No, thank you very much. All right, well, thank you, thank you for coming in. Thanks well, for the update. Appreciate thank all of you. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Welcome. Thanks. Okay. Welcome, sir. To yes. Bagpipes? Yeah. No. All right. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta bring them. You, yeah. you gotta bring them yourself. Yeah. So. Right. Well, <laughs> Add that to your job. Oh, there they are. Mark Mercurial. Mark.
thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, wow. All right, we're a little ahead of schedule, but I see that uh, Irene is here. At 2.2, we have a 7 o'clock appointment with the uh, Recycling Committee member, Irene Con Condon, to give us the committee update. Yeah. So I'm Irene Condon. I'm the chair of the Townsend Recycling Committee. And we had just an incredible event this past week. So we did textile recycling within North Middlesex Elementary Schools. So they did it the whole week. They go from Monday to Friday at each of the elementary schools. And then Saturday we were at Hannaford's for two hours. And we'd go by points, so I don't have the tonnage, but I'm expecting it's probably about 5,000 pounds that we probably collected. But uh, we did point-wise of uh, 1,200 points. So each bag is counted as a point. And uh, the winning class, we have a class, each of the elementary schools were competing in their classes. So in Spalding, fourth grade, uh, Camo's class won. And in Ashby, first grade, Laundry's class won. And in Varnonbrook and Pepperell, first grade, D's class won. And so each of them will get a cash prize that we get from the sale of the textiles. Okay. And then the remainder goes to TEO. So we've been doing this for um, over five years now. And it's been, the biggest thing why we're doing this is a big education push, is 70 pounds of per person per year is thrown out in the trash. And a lot of people don't realize that we have clothing bins everywhere. We have clothing bins behind the library. We have clothing bins at Spalding. We have different vendors, businesses have clothing bins. And uh, they only think of, oh, it has to be pristine. It has to be perfect to be put into the bin. But it can be good, bad, and ugly. So if it has a stain, it has a rip, the zipper's broken, it's a stuffed animal, it's a shoe, it's bedding like pillows or blankets or towels or accessories, belts and pocketbooks and backpacks, they can all go in. But they need to go in the bin, nothing outside. <laughs> because if it gets wet, it's trash. And so we also support TEO. TEO typically takes clothes that are in season and to drop it off at Bayberry Hill. Um, but we have places all over. And so as the recycling committee, we don't want this stuff in the trash because we know 70 pounds per person is still put into the trash. So by doing this competition, I just had a parent today call, oh, I missed it. <laughs> I'm like, that's okay, there's a bin down the road, put it in. And uh, you can do that and we want people as they're cleaning out their closets not to put it in the trash and to put it in the recycling bin. So that's a big event and that helps us and our trash has gone down. So this past year, normally we have the big push every time we go down with uh, we're a two bag, two container limit right now for trash. And uh, when we went to single stream, mixed recycling paper and containers, and then when we went to weekly recycling, that brought down our trash because people recycled more. And uh, now I think with the education push on textiles, we went down another 100, 100 tons. So it, it's working through the town. We have a big event coming up November, Monday, November 13th, and we'd like uh, the board to be involved as well. I think we're, the Board of Health is having the meeting here. It's going to be an environmental forum at 6 o'clock. And we want to get the word out is that not only is the Board of Health and the Recycling Committee been doing a lot on waste reduction, but we have the hazardous waste, and there's different things that come up We've added a lot of new things at the re transfer at the recycling center, like the swap shop. I don't know if you've seen that, but you can do the take it or leave it now, all the time when the recycling center is open, the first and third Saturday of the month. Um, so the environmental form, we want to talk about. We want to invite different committees, different boards, different local groups in the area that are doing environmental things. Because a lot of times people, if you're not negatively affected by it, you don't know, oh my goodness, how much an energy committee has done in the past. You know, how much the recycling committee has done, how much is the Board of Health committee, how much does the conservation committee have done to help preserve our water, our land, our resources. And just, it's America Recycles Day on November 15th. So that's why we're, this was the closest day. So November 13th is we're gonna have the environmental forum. 
Where is that going to be? Right in this room. Okay. Are there flyers that you've got posted? We have not gotten a flyer yet, but we'd love to uh, just get the word out. Okay. Um, hopefully we can get it into the paper as a, an event, you know, a calendar event. So but that's not, is that a formal meeting of the Board of Health or is it? Yes, that will be a regular Board of Health. They, they'll but the other it. committees are coming as well and make presentations? Yep. Or, okay. Mm -hmm. And what, the public Absolutely. is it invited the to? Absolutely. come, we'd love to have the uh, cable come to, to okay. That's where we're picking this room. Have you arranged with that? To I don't help? know if the Board of Health has done that yet. Okay. So they, they, they'd be in charge of making yeah. that happen? Okay. Because mm -hmm. I know Jim has been sick, so I think a lot of things Oh, happen. okay. Um, and then the other big thing that comes up is, believe it or not, I mean, we're almost in November, so I might as well talk about starting in January, we start the planning for Earth Day. So if anybody's interested Already. in participating <laughs> and helping doing the planning for Earth Day, because uh, that's our biggest uh, event at the town common. Um, that starts the thir January and it's the third Tuesday of the month and then we'll do the third Tuesday of the month planning for Earth Day. And what day is Earth Day this April year? 21st will be our celebration at the town common. Nationally it's April 22nd but that's the closest Saturday so April 21st will be our celebration and our theme already is hoof and woof so horses and dogs hoof and woof. So we had a, a wonderful event with paws, four paws this past year, and everybody uh, is loving the animals, and they keep on coming and growing. I think we're getting more chickens and goats that people are loving in Townsend. So it, it's a wonderful event. So it is. Uh, any questions about well, what we're doing? Right, we've yeah, what do you do? What? When you sell the, the textiles, what are they being? What are the people that are purchasing them? What do they do? We use Bay State Textiles, and just for this past event, and uh, they s separate everything. So reusable things will go to. They'll bail them up, and it'll be used for thrift shops around world, the country, around the area, Massachusetts. They'll ship it everywhere. If it's usable textiles, but not the perfect, they'll grade it. And then it'll be shipped, and so you can take an old skirt and make a new, shorter skirt or something out of it. Um, and then stuff that you really don't think of, like old sneakers get ground up, old shoes get ground up, the socks and your underwear drawers, they'll, they'll, and old jeans get shredded completely and become insulation. So, and those are businesses that we have here in Massachusetts. So we have in Millbury, a fourth generation company that all they do is they take your old painted t-shirts, your old um, towels and just cut them up. And then they take all the socks and everything like that, put them in a grinder and grind it up <coughs> and it's insulation. That's so this is supporting local business all over. So, so it is true, absolutely. It doesn't matter what condition are. Correct. We just don't want wet. End of life stuff. No wet, wet stuff makes, okay. it's like bad apples. There's something that smells really, we don't want. Is there something, if I remember, there's, is there a rule too that no, no, like if they've been used for rags with, that have petroleum products? Correct, we no oil. We shouldn't yeah. put like old gas right. that we cleaned up, gasoline, That's, we yes, should that, that dispose of those. Okay, but anything, regardless of dirty, if we've painted in them, if we've, regardless of what we've cleaned yep. up, we can. Do we like it to be laundered, like so at least okay. we went through at least one. Okay. All right. Cleaning because people are touching it. You know, we have multiple sure. people that are touching it. Okay. And just bags, because that's the bad thing is if stuff is left outside, it's wet, it's trash. Wherever been anywhere around the country, that's the process. Um, there's another event that's happening tomorrow that we're a part of is the Devon's HHW event. So we have it this Wednesday tomorrow. Uh, Hit the first, so Wednesday. Or yeah, day. so we're, we're Tuesday. We're confusing everyone by having our meeting tonight. Yeah, so um, on November 1st is the Devon's HHW event, and that's open for businesses and all, everybody here in Townsend, as well as this coming Saturday. And you can go to devonshhw.com. Since we're talking about all these things, is the Recycling Center in Townsend open this weekend, or is it next weekend, or do we... Do you have to look yeah, it's the first and third, so it'd be open. It should be open. Okay. And that's, what time does that open? Seven to two. Seven to two. And the the swap shop has a little less hours, but it's, it's okay. Anyone have any questions? No, Madam Chairman. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Okay. Okay. Date, right? Just love more people and more committees to be involved on November 13th. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all the hard work. And they can talk the hard to Carla at the Board of Health to set it up. Yeah, have her get a hold of Jim to get, make sure we need any. Yeah, if we, a anything. department thing can go out. Thank you. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to appointments. Uh, 3.1, we have uh, appoint Amelia Gentry to the Townsend Conservation Commission. Do we have a... I move that the board appoint Amelia Gentry to the Townsend Conservation Commission for a term <coughs> effective October 30th, 2017 to June 30th, 2020. Second. Uh, motion's been made and seconded. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? It's uh, uh, unanimous. 3.2, we have a point Wayne Thomas as fleet mechanic for the Townsend Highway Department. I move that the board appoint Wayne Thomas as fleet mechanic for the Townsend Highway Department effective October 30th, <coughs> 2017, contingent upon passing of a pre-placement medical exam and a quarry check with a one-year probationary period. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? And it's unanimous. <coughs> Next we have meeting business 4.1. Review and sign proclamation declaring November's Diabetes Awareness Month. Sure. Whereas diabetes affects 29.1 million people, 9.3% of the population and this, may I have that one? Thank you, this one's cut off. 9.3% um, of the population in the United States and is a serious disease for which there is no known cure and which is the seventh leading cause of death by disease in the United States. And whereas approximately one quarter of the Americans who have diabetes, 8.1 million or 27.8% of people do not know that they have the disease and may experience damage to their heart, eyes, kidneys, and limbs without producing any symptoms. And whereas another 86 million, or one in three American adults, has prediabetes, a condition which puts them at a greater risk for developing type 2 diabetes, and if current trends continue, one in three American adults will have diabetes by 2050. And whereas type 1 diabetes, T1D, is an autoimmune disease in which a person's pancreas stops producing insulin, a hormone that enables people to get energy from food. It occurs when the body's immune system attacks and destroys the insulin producing cells in the pancreas called beta cells. While, it cause, while its causes are not yet entirely understood, scientists believe that both genetic factors and environmental triggers are involved. Its onset has nothing to do with diet or lifestyle. There is no prevention for T1D. At present, no cure. And whereas T1D strikes both children and adults at any age, it comes on suddenly, causes dependence on injected or pumped insulin for life and carries the constant threat of devastating complications. And whereas 1.25 million Americans are living with TD1, including about 200,000 youth less than 20 years old and over a million adults 20 years old and older, 40,000 40, people are diagnosed each year in the U.S. Five million people in the U.S. are expected to have T1D by 2050, including nearly 600,000 youth. Between 2001 and 2009, there was a 21% increase in the prevalence of T1D in people under age 20. 14 billion dollars of T1D associated annual health care costs in the U.S. 
whereas diabetes has many faces affecting everyone, young and old alike, Caucasians, African Americans, Latinos, Native Americans, Asian Americans, and Pacific Islanders, with minority populations in the United States having an increased risk for developing the disease. And whereas an increase in, com in community awareness of the risk factors and symptoms related to diabetes can improve the likelihood that people with diabetes will get the attention they need before suffering the devastating complications of the disease. Now therefore the Board of Selectmen do hereby proclaim November 2017 as Diabetes Awareness Month in the town of Townsend and encourage all citizens to help fight this disease and its deadly complications including heart and kidney disease, stroke, blindness and amputation by increasing the awareness of the risk factors for diabetes and by providing support to those suffering from diabetes. Yeah. Um, this, this really hits home. My husband had type 2 diabetes. Um, my son, when he was 20, was diagnosed with type 1. Uh, juvenile diabetes on the older end and um, a few years ago his son who was only eight at the time was diagnosed with type 1. Um, the good thing about having um, a child with type 1 born to somebody with type 1 is that they're well equipped to take care of him. Um, he's very well educated on his disease. He does his maintenance himself. He knows um, that he needs to treat every time he eats something um, because if not his sugar goes too high and and that's very dangerous. There's also danger if your sugar gets too low. So you have to be very careful about it. But he has a pump and, um, and that is working real well. My son has um, an app actually that is connected to that he has um, that tells him what his sugar is all the time. So while he's working, he can check and see. Oh, you know what? My sugar's getting a little low. I got to take a break for five and and get something. So um, they're they're making all kinds of strides with it, which is very nice. Um, but it it does it does hit hard and when Joey was diagnosed he said at first he was upset about it we all were and then he said um, you know what as long as you do what you have to do it's just really a major inconvenience mm -hmm. so um, this this is a, an important so one we have a motion to sign that I have a motion to sign it second all right all those in favor Hi. All right, let's get it signed. And I want to add that um, a couple things on di diabetes. One, I, I think it's important for all, all of us to, to realize that one of the first whereas uh, was that one in three American adults has prediabetes. And the only way we can find out that we have this is to see our doctors. And I know sometimes we're, we're not feeling bad, so we don't go. Or if, even if we are feeling bad, people procrastinate going to see their doctor. But this is something that's easily picked up by our physicians and because initially they may not have really reliable symptoms. And I also want to speak up for non-humans. I've had two cats uh, that have been insulin dependent. Um, I have one. One left, my uh, older cat uh, died a couple years ago, but it's, it's it really amazing to find out, have your vet tell you your, your cat is diabetic mm -hmm. and you have to give your cat insulin twice a day for the rest of their lives. So, um, I've experienced that and uh, so taking your pets to the vet is also important because they get diabetes too. It's always fun to go to the drugstore and pick up my supplies. <laughs> it's for my cat, but so that's important. So this is a very important, uh, important disease that we, we really can make a difference in our lives. Thank you for that. All right, 4.2. We have a number of licenses to approve. I don't know if you want to read them all individually or together. Do we need to do them separately? Or? 
Um, However, it works for you, Sue. So. I'll, I'll probably just read them all. Okay. If that's okay with the board. I move to. Uh, I move that the board sign several licenses. Um, 2018 Class 2 license application for W. Barrow Enterprises Limited, 345 Main Street, Townsend. A 2018 Class 2 license application for Roy D. Shepard, Inc., DBA Shepard Sales and Service, 55 Main Street, Townsend, Mass. 2018 Class 3 license application for Roy D. Shepard, Inc., DBA Joe's Auto Body, 55 Main Street, Townsend, and a 2018 Common Victual license application for Brick Steamer, LLC, DBA Cherry Hill Ice Cream 2, 53 Main Street, Townsend. More. Um, a 2018 Common Victor License application for Gourmet House, Inc., DBA Panda Walk, 18 Main Street, Townsend. 2018 All Alcoholic Beverages, Restaurant Liquor License application for Gourmet House, Inc., DBA Panda Walk, 18 Main Street, Townsend. Mass License Number 0017-RS-1286 Contingent upon a valid certificate of inspection. That is it. Second as read 4.244.7 by Clerk Sue Lizio. Thank you, Sue, for reading all this. Yes, thank you. And um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. It's uh, unanimous that all of those license 4.1 through 4.7 are approved. And we'll get those signed after, maybe after. Okay. 4.8, we need to set a special town meeting date with our administrative staff of suggested November 28th, 2017. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, so the suggested date would be November 28th, and right now, based on the last update from the department head meeting last week, the finance team believes that we'll have had the books closed and received certification back from DOR on free cash in time for that meeting. Obviously, uh, anything financial would require that. And the recommendation would be that you vote to open the warrant tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. and close the warrant on 11:17 at 12 p.m. That would give us um, a week, little over a week to finalize the warrant, get everything checked out for legal, and produce the warrants for distribution. So, man, mm -hmm. I, I just have a question. How how long do we have to keep it open? When does it have to be closed? Actually, I, I apologize. It, it's a two-week um, special, so we would need to be posted by the 14th. So giving a week from the 14th would only be the 7th. We'd have to close by, which is really only a week to get warrant articles in. That's not very much time. No, it's not. Um, I, know I mean, the, because they not only have to, you know, people need to know about it, and put the warrant together. We do, have, we, we do have a number of warrant articles already in a file in anticipation of the special. Um, so people have been right along the line um, presenting things for the file um, for when the warrant does get open. Um, but with a two-week notice, two-week notice window, I mean, you can you could shrink the one week from closure to posting that we would use to finalize the warrant and get everything prepared. Um, that just that just means working a little a, a little harder under a little tighter deadline to to get things. Don't forget you've got Thanksgiving in there too. Sure. Okay, so the plan would be to vote to schedule it for November twenty eighth. Open the warrant for tomorrow. Close the warrant on November seventeenth. We can't do that any longer because it's oh. a two week notice. Mm -hmm. that we have to post for two weeks. Okay. So post by the 14th, which would mean we'd really have, um, I mean, if you, if you closed it on the 10th, you'd, you'd leave the weekend and Monday the 13th to get everything finalized. Um, 
No, there's nothing that says we can't be working on getting it set up between now and then as things are already in the file. Um, but the objective is to try to get something done before December, but give enough time for the finance staff and DOR to get free cash certified. So this is, it's really the best the best targeted date. Um, there are some issues that I know that the treasurer collector is interested in being able to resolve. We can't close on the 10th. It's a holiday. Correct. So the 9th. Because it'd be unrealistic to do the 31st. <coughs> so if you open the 31st, close the 9th. Do we have a meeting in between there? Sure. We should. Yeah. yeah. Scheduled for okay, December twelfth. Okay, we kept the tweets. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And why don't we want to do it in December? There are a couple. I'm just of thinking the first yeah. week of December yeah. instead. Um, there, there are a couple of financial reasons that I know that the treasurer collector has been working hard to get the books closed out so we can get the special town meeting to make some adjustments. Um, beyond that, I'm, I'm, Carolyn, do you recall from the department head meeting what, what Barbara said? Well, I think what the, the main issue is is the school resource officer. So we use the money as a revenue source and they're no longer there. So we have to back that out and use the police department money in order to balance it. Wasn't that the biggest issue? That, that's part of it. There's also, I know, the ability to set the tax rate and send out tax bills exactly. in time to be able to realize you have to the, have that um, balance tax. To be able to realize the revenue uh, in time as well. You need to have that done before the, December, the end of December. Um, it's, it's, your, it's your prerogative as the board. If you, want to, if you want to push it out to the first week of December. Um, we also have the election the first week of December. Um, oh, that's that's right. right. That's another reason why we were looking at November because yeah. of the election. Yep. Madam Chairman? One election. Yes. Thank you. As I look here, if I'm correct, we would be meeting on the 28th to suggest the date. Um, just my input is I'm going with the 28th, but I don't know what the other two members of the board are interested in. So that would be a regular scheduled meeting for us the 28th. And the financial, I always, we're doing so good our financials now, I want to do everything to support those people. That's just my personal opinion. I'm going with the 28th. I don't know what you two would like to do. Open tomorrow, close the 9th, post on the 14th, held on the 28th. Yes, I think we have to do it because if we're going to end up in the middle of December if we don't because, we because of the election. Yeah. We can't have the election and a special town in the same week because the, the great hall isn't available. Can you talk about election? Special election for the Senate seat. Thank you. And just while we're on that, just to, uh, we have a primary uh, next Tuesday. It's from set on that set for the special. It's a primary for the, the parties um, for the same seat, and then the regular election will be on the first week, the first Tuesday in December. So. Uh, busy, busy season we have. So, okay. a motion for all so of that. So, I move to set the special town meeting date for November 28th, 2017. Um, and as part of the motion to open the warrant on October 31st at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., and to close the warrant on 11 9 at 12 noon, if possible, that'll give us the half day. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Did you get there, Carolyn? Is that an aye? Aye, I'm aye. sorry. Okay. It's uh, unanimous that we're, we're going to have the special town meeting on November 28th open the warrant tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. close November 9th at 12 noon, and we'll have to post by 11 14. By the 14th. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm sure this has already been done. Have we talked to John Barrett? I know that last time I spoke with John, he knew that we we're going to be having something in late fall. Okay. We can confirm. Okay. That would be helpful for we need a moderator. So, all right. So, we all set on 4.8? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, 
review comment on the preliminary design plans for West Meadow Road Bridge. Do we have any? Uh, we've had that in our, desk we've had it on the desk for a while. Has anybody? Don't give any comment on the preliminary design, that's all. I, I think so, we needed to do it officially, so. Okay. Um, no comment. I'm glad we're getting bridges fixed and repaired and replaced and. I did forward a copy of to um, conservation because there is some weapons around in that area. Okay, so. and they'll have to vote on, on well, this they as well? can make recommendations. Recommendations, okay. Do you have any comments? I do not, thank you okay. for asking. All right. Um, so I move to take no action on it. Thank, thank you to them for forwarding it to us. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. So we'll, uh, it's unanimous that we will s send no comments over to. Uh, who's asking for that? Mastiot. Mastiot. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And the addition that we had uh, for, for tonight is 4.10. Review approved sign the following applications to cross alter and or construct within a townway for Unitel MSR Utility Maintenance Corporation. Madam Chair, I move that the board sign the following applications to cross alter and or construct within a townway for Unitel MSR Utility Maintenance Corp. 58 to 60 Emory Road to install test station with anodes. That what it is. It's an end. Pronounce that. Okay, Emory Road, pole twenty nine seventy nine to install test station with anodes. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody can tell us what it is after. <laughs> and Emory Road, pole pole two nine six two to install test station with anodes. <laughs> <laughs> An anode is an electrode through which conventional current flows in a polarized electrical device. To monitor corrosion. Sounds, important. Word. Sounds important. To monitor corrosion. Okay. Emory Road pulled 2974 to install test station with anodes. <laughs> Emory Road at South Road to install test station with anodes. Second. Madam Chairman, if with your indulgence and Sue's indulgence, okay. could, could we just add, and this is just part of a best practice, um, the following, and I'll explain why. I'm contingent upon receiving of all permitting fees, and the reason I want to do that is to put it in a best practice. Um, other utilities, I'm not saying until I have no knowledge of their bill of paying abilities, right now other municipalities are having a problem collecting fees once permits are given. And some of them uh, act and I think was up to like $40,000. So if we don't give the permit until the fees received, I think that's a best practice for the future, if that's okay with the rest of the board. So. Isn't that what we usually do anyway? Yeah, well, but if it's not in writing, fees, it doesn't count. Yeah, the fees have been paid that we usually don't put right. on the agenda. Until oh, okay, so it's all set. But oh, I all would right. just like to make that okay. part yeah. best oh, practice. Sure. Thank you very much for right. So consideration. That, that's a second. second. Yes. Okay. If that's all those right, in favor? Sure. Only if that's all right. Yeah, that's fine. Thank right. you, Sue. So it's unanimous that uh, yes. we're going to get the anodes taken care of. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both for. All right. <laughs> Well, that's good to have a little humor at these meetings. Okay, uh, so work session, uh, town administrator updates and reports. Just two very brief things, Madam Chair. Um, number one, at the last meeting, I did provide a brief update on Chapter 90 funds and roadway repairs um, in an attempt at addressing what appeared to be some concerns circulating about in the public um, regarding road work and money and where's the money and what's happening with it and had the state pulled it back or uh, other things. Um, it apparently was not successful in conveying the message last time, so I'll, I'll offer another thought or two on that now. Um, chapter 90 money is money that is allocated by the Commonwealth based on a formula to each community. It's not money that exists in the town, in the town's books, unless you have first applied for a project to be certified through the Board of Selectmen, at the recommendation of the highway superintendent, been granted authorization to do the work, had the work done, paid for it internally, and then had the reimbursement request approved by the select board and submitted to the Commonwealth, and then those funds are dispersed to the town. So to the extent that there's, there's some belief that um, these are dollars that exist and can be um, used for purposes other than road work, that's just not so. 
And I just want to make certain that people understand that because it actually is something that um, has been um, shared with me as a, a posting on uh, Facebook that there, there's a belief that the money has um, been transferred for some other purpose. Hmm. So just clear that's not the case. It does address um, or, or lead to the bigger issue, which is a concern that was first expressed pretty clearly at town meeting about the condition of roads, not just in Townsend, but Commonwealth-wide. There was a story in the Boston Globe two weeks ago about the state of disrepair of our roads as a Commonwealth. Um, we get roughly four hundred to $450,000 a year from Chapter 90. For the two years that I've been involved in, in doing um, budgeting, we put an additional 100000 a year um, toward that amount um, to, to supplement the Chapter 90 funds. Um, Ed Kukula, our, our now former highway superintendent, spoke at town meeting, um, the details of which I don't have with me this evening, but I do want to get them back in front of you as a board, about the cost per mile of doing road work, whether it's um, a simple reclamation or a full depth reconstruction. Um, it sounds like having a half a million dollars a year um, would do the entirety of, of a neighborhood. It, it doesn't. Um, that's not to say, however, that we should ignore the concern that we've heard people express about wanting to do more road work. It just begs the discussion of, if so, from where? So if, as a community, we're going to do more road work, what is the funding mechanism? What is the funding source? Um, things that communities have been successful with in the past um, to try to tackle this issue, because you're generally not going to look at a, you know, a $12 million budget and um, take $2 million out of the operating budget and close departments wholesale um, in order to do road work. That's generally not um, the course that's taken. What people have done is looked at their debt service, so their long-term debt payments, and um, when they're going to retire debt, and what it would take to do a long-term borrowing to do road work. So I think Ed Kukula mentioned a figure of uh, $5 million, and, and it may be that it was a different number. Um, that would get us a great way towards getting all of the main uh, roadways and some of the arterial roads <coughs> fully reconstructed. Instead of having to come up with $5 million, you bond that, you borrow it, and you pay it out over the 20-year life expectancy of the roads. Um, obviously, nobody's interested in taking on more debt right now, um, particularly given the fact that the school um, has, uh, has yet to fully hit and people haven't fully realized it. Um, but if we look out over the course of that debt schedule, we should be able to see when things are going to drop off other borrowings that we have that free up money within the existing operating budget that would not require consideration of an increase in taxation. Um, so to close the loop on this, what I'd love to do is if there's some folks out in the community that have an interest in talking about this, send an email and um, I, I don't want it to be a working group of the select board that would require you know, all of the, the hoops and, and, and buzzers and whistles uh, that would come with being a subcommittee, but just, you know, an ad hoc group of people that, you know, get around the table with the highway superintendent. We can bring somebody from MassDOTU in that can talk about it and look at our the software program that I'm not certain when it's last been employed um, to look at what the, the relative scale or rating of roadways is in terms of being reconstructed, but have a meaningful dialogue about what it looks like, what it might cost, and what our long-term debt schedule looks like, and see if we can't come up with a plan moving forward. Cindy? Yeah, I was hoping, now that we're, it looks like we're getting the books closed, and that the highway money is a, was a concern, um, and as well as all the other debt, we've had a number of projects with fire stations. Sure. We've got the West Townsend Fire Station, which just seems to get more and more expensive as the grass grows over there, yeah. that trying to figure out how we're going to pay for things, that we can only go so far into debt, right. that um, our debt service can't, there's a, there's a limit on, on how deep, not even just if we want to vote for it or not, we can only go so deep into debt, that I, I was hoping that we could look at where we are as far as the, because we've already got our our revenue projections, we have sure. a means in order to look at the, these numbers to see where we could fit it in, right. regardless of what roads need to be done or even how much. Right. <laughs> but you know, where can we fit in? When when can we really start talking about adding a, an additional um, debt uh, for this work? 
I think we all know, and I don't think there's anyone in town that, that doesn't know that there's roads that need to be done, and it's not that the town leadership isn't, we're not, we're not just sitting here going, so what? We're, we, we know that um, we live on the roads too, and we know where the potholes are, and that it's, it seems to be a pothole repair brigade, I call them, <laughs> um, that it seems to be the only thing that gets done. But um, I, I am hoping to, that having the community get involved so that um, the community members can understand and participate in that decision making process is, is not a bad idea at all. Yes? Um, on that point, um, Mr. Carter, when other communities have put aside, say, gone to a bond for five million, how do they do that? Do they do it typically as a, an override? You know, I've seen it done. I've seen a it debt done exclusion or capital. Sure, I've seen it done both ways. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend it be done as an override. I wouldn't recommend no, that, no, that the I town consider that. I don't mean an override, that. but right. it, but there's or debt exclusion even. I, I wouldn't recommend it as debt a exclusion. Capital exclusion. Uh, and again, I, I'm going to turn to Carolyn in a second here because she said something at the department head meeting that I hadn't, I, I wasn't aware of, and I hadn't thought. And I don't mean to put her on the spot, but. When we are evaluated by Moody's and they look at our um, our bond rating, they look at things very closely. One of the things they look at is our, um, our our debt load, basically how much debt we're carrying as a percentage of our total available funds. We look like we're relatively debt free, all things considered. Mm -hmm. And Carolyn, can you just take a second and, and share with everybody what you shared at the department meeting because I thought it was pretty enlightening. The Collins Institute did a good job of drawing out the whole debt in those projection packages mm -hmm. that's online. But the issue is when you're dealing with a regional school district, the debt that you have with your school is not incorporated into your levy limit or even your outlook. So Moody's will look at us and they don't even realize that the regional district, a lot of, well, obviously they realize it because, I mean, there's a vote. But um, it, so it appears as though our debt load is low. But when you incorporate all that debt in from Neshoba and from North Middlesex, I bet we're pretty close to the levy. We, are, we would be bumped up right against it if that was includes, included. So, I mean, a simple look at the financials might lead you to believe that, you know, we're, we're, we're relatively debt free, we're light, but we're not. And people are feeling it, and we know they're going to feel it more when they, they see the full impact of the new school. Having said that, that's why I wouldn't recommend this be looked at as an additional dig into the pocket of the taxpayer, but instead look at what debt are we carrying inside the operating budget. So every year we have an amount of money that gets appropriated to pay the bill for all of the things we have done. That's money that exists given the existing amount of, of revenue we take in from all of our sources. When we pay something off, that additional amount of money would very easily go towards another widget or a copier or a vehicle or something. Um, I would recommend that we actually look closely at that debt schedule and try to identify when those openings are coming in the future and be able to present a plan that goes forth to the town meeting that says you have the ability to, to reallocate this. It's not an override, it's not an increase in tax. Um, we're not looking at debt exclusion or uh, debt exclusion debt that goes away because rightfully that should go away and the tax rate should drop accordingly. We're talking about inside the levy limit debt payments that go away. If I remember correctly, we only have that capital article in the fire station, so that would be the 1.6 for the fire station, and there's probably about 600 left on the capital article. I don't think there's anything else inside of the um, debt exclusion that we have for debt. And we've been chipping away at that six. Yeah. Are you Every year. Mm -hmm. All right, so we can, mm -hmm. that's something we can look at when we when we meet with the, the finance team to, yes. to see how much free, free money we have to, to play with. So roads for the future. be my thing, so can I ask the question now? Or let Jim know. Um, I actually was, I, I was remiss today. I was going to send you an email, um, and I will do that tomorrow. Um, I spoke with a couple of people um, that are neighbors of mine that are very interested in working on a project. Um, I think Scott might have come and talked to you before. Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to kind of just put a little email introducing you guys again to each other. Absolutely. And, um, and then maybe you could go from there. I would also be interested in, in working on something like that, too. Um, but I, you know, I don't want to suggest a, you know, a subcommittee. But just 
just when scheduled come on in yeah exactly so um, you know but I am really interested in it and and I think um, I think it's a good opportunity for people to understand the different ways that you can fund things mm -hmm. you know and uh, the question is getting to that number of what's it going to get us um, what I would like to ask for if you could hunt up that consultants report that we did okay I, I looked and I don't have it any longer but um, we might want to review that with folks too um, both the you know the small committee but also with the town in general because it's similar to the one that Lunenburg did and as a matter of fact it was the same people that uh, that did the Lunenburg study um, in the it was based on the roads, the condition of each road, and what level of reclamation, if you will, each one needed. Um, and then they were all prioritized. And I wouldn't guess that it's changed a whole heck of a lot because we haven't done that many. Um, but Ed was a big proponent of, of starting that, and we never were able to fund it. Yeah, I remember when that was done, yeah. and it was like, okay, that's, that's it was nice, almost a that's nice I that know, we have but that, but we're not, we can't, we couldn't move. But that that's really before. something I think that we need to start working on actively because, um, mm -hmm. you know, that affects all. Of us. I think it, over the next few weeks, as we're getting, oh you know, yeah, over the next several weeks, we'll be right, and trying you, to look at that stuff. If you look at, I mean, five million dollars, we have a. A stellar bond rating, so we would see a, a relatively um, minuscule interest rate. So just simple math: five million, twenty years, you know, quarter million dollars a year without interest. So, you know, after you run that through a table and put the interest in, we're dealing with say two seventy-five a year. We're currently putting a hundred out towards roads. We're also seeing that four plus in from the state. Um, some communities, um, it's. It's not advisable, and uh, I'd want to look into it more deeply, but some communities actually do a long-term borrow and designate a portion of their Chapter 90 funds to pay the debt service. So if we've got a, a bill of 275 coming in every year, we've already got 100 that we account for, so we've got 175 left. We see 400 from the state, take 175 of that to pay the debt, you've got the remainder to do other projects as they come. But you've had the benefit of that $5 million out long-term to do major project so again I think it's not as simple as as the roads are bad the town doesn't care the town has money and is choosing to not fix the roads I mean it's it there are a lot of a lot of facets to this and I think that we have an obligation to provide both the the education and, and a pathway forward so I, I just have one other question does this does a, a project like that go through capital and all first I, I see. That's what I, I guess. We have, have to, to look do. at the definition. Of that. Exactly. Any, anything over ten with a life expectancy yeah. of five. Five. So I mean, yeah. arguably, yeah. arguably, it would. Yes, it would. Yeah. Arguably, yeah. it would. It's been argued both ways. It's operational because we're always are forever. You know, constant. Every year, like you gotta be doing it. So. I think we could we could do all Either kinds. Way. There's a lot of different things we can do, and different towns do it differently. I, one concern I have too, if we're going to have like five, just throwing this out there, five million dollars, and we're, we're going to say that this is going to be for a five-year project, but we're going to have long-term debt for it. I'm not. That doesn't excite me as much as making sure that we have a maintenance plan that sure. we're not just going to throw five million dollars into the roads and okay go back to spending a hundred thousand dollars on pothole repair as the, i, I right, would so rather good thing about that study <laughs> i would rather yeah. make sure that when we whatever we're doing that we're also looking at that there's a we have an evaluation what is it going to cost us over the next is at least as long as a debt would be there like if we're going to have a 20-year debt how much money do we need to make sure that we're going to continually recycle on the roads, not not in five years saying, okay, we need to borrow more money when we already have 20 years worth of debt for the for the roads. And make sure up, that there's a plan. Ed brought up another piece to that plan, and that was it takes the politics out of it as Absolutely. well. Okay, um, and it's it's very objective, 
so that anyone who looks at it can see, you know what, yeah, you're right, that those roads are the priority for this year. Um, because it's loud, it's in black and white. I know that there are some needed. roads that are really in absolute horrible shape. And Unfortunately, <clears throat> all of Timberley Park is getting like that. I'm hearing that. 40 year plus. Yes. You have a, a person with a that's, question? That's okay. Um, Jim, do you want to bring up the tier two um, complete streets grant that we received? Because we do have the notice to proceed now. Sure. It's kind of fitting with it. We have noticed to proceed on the tier two for the complete street. <laughs> Um, one of the things that Ed did, um, one of the things that Ed did, is become certified in the Complete Streets program through the Commonwealth. So basically, it's a training he had to go through, through DOT, and it's meant to uh, to encourage a long-range look at this type of work, not just this. You know, I've got, you know noise coming from a neighborhood, therefore I'm going to spend money in that neighborhood, but do it more long term. One of the ongoing projects that I know um, the board has been involved in and, and, and far longer than, than I've been able to read back of the sidewalks um, to try to get from the center down to the school all the way. One of the pieces that we had sufficient funding for to do the engineering on, um, Carolyn, you want to take that, that stretches from? Oh, we finally got it, didn't we? Yeah, it's, I, I believe the engineering's done on it and it's just going to be implemented. But what the Complete Streets program, the, the plan that they're coming out to do is they're going to be meeting with the community and everything and they're going to be doing a needs-based, Massachusetts requires it in order to fund projects. So it's going to range anywhere from what, sidewalks to bridges, meeting house parks to yep. bridges. So this planning committee comes out and does a plan to file with the state and so every year you can apply for money through the compact money to fund one of those projects. The first of which is we did get notice that we received the funding for the engineering study that she's talking 33, about. 000. 33 grand we got the notice to proceed so the same consultant that worked with Ed doing the application is going to be moving forward with the plan. Uh, this, this could dovetail with things like the um, the bridge work that the water department was thinking about this past spring they had several meetings with conservation regarding uh, bridge into the pump station area um, i know that cemetery and parks have been looking at the need to redo the sidewalks in the common um, so the question is do those sidewalks are those sidewalks considered part of um, arterial um, travelways for pedestrians and, and bicyclists so we, we'd be able to have charrettes or, or um, community-wide meetings to put priority on what these projects should look like and where they should be. Um, so that's the, that's the Complete Streets update. Thank you. Yeah, we have to have that plan on file by April 1st so the board will be able to see what you know the community has deemed their priorities. Right. My only concern with that is <clears throat> with what's going on with health care costs and trying to make up for potential Medicaid cuts and whatnot. We might see some changes in budgeting at the state level. So we might not be able to count on some things that we were. At minimum, we'll have a plan that's community driven. Which is a good. That's already paid. That's in hand. So we're ready for that. Um, whether there are grant opportunities beyond that would be gravy. My concern is that it might not be enough. To do. Even, even the plan that you described, it, it, it's still a small amount of money in terms of, you know, the, the, I mean, unless you have that five million up front, you know? Gotcha. And I think the state budget is always a moving target. So uh, as much as there's a lot of need to be looking at the state budget, um, it's, it is early in the in the budgeting process when we, we often are don't know what we're getting until sometime in July or August of the following fiscal year so um, I think we should move on with it whatever plans that we want to and, and hope for the best so, so if, if if anybody's listening anybody's watching anybody know somebody that's not watching or listening but know they have an interest. I will forward you the information. You know, you know, just, just a quick email or a stop in the office and drop a note but um, we'll get a group of people around the table and start start working the issue. So that's that's the first thing. Um, Madam Chairman? Could, could we hear from... Uh, no, thank you. Oh, we're listening Madam to Tom. I'm sorry, can I just put a quick thing in here please? Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you to 
um, Cindy, Sue, and Jim for your uh, your thoughtful uh, thoughts on what we've been talking about, and to Carolyn for always keeping us on track. I greatly appreciate your wealth of wisdom. Now, Mr. Crowley, I'd like just to ask you at this time, what is our current bond rating? Of course you asked me that. Um, it is double, double A three. Thank you. Uh, two, two steps from top. And the only reason I ask that is that um, I've taken in the, the knowledge that the rest of the board you have given to us here is that um, I would support any of those ideas. The only thing is that I'm not interested in anything that lowers the last two years of hard work to get us at that rating. And, and I think you would all both agree with that, but I just want to make that publicly, is that I'm very proud of that rating. And two years of hard work by a lot more smart people than me have got us to that. So I want to thank everyone. Yeah, I think we're good with the, with the, the call and right, center that's, yeah. spreadsheet. That we, we just have to look at that. And, and then as we're, Carolyn we're brought really up here, yeah. I just want to um, remind the public and the board is that because we were one of the first, Carolyn might know better, I think we're the 13th or the 17th in the whole state out of 351 to adopt compass best practices and all these other grants now we get considered before everyone else because so I mean that's uh, it's a big picture here you know it's these things you folks have been talking about they don't happen a month or two it's, you know, we're doing long-term practices now so um, I just want to thank you all that's all I have Madam Chairman. thank you okay. um, moving on quickly I have um, a couple of, of additional things um, superintendent Landers um, of the North Middlesex Regional School District I understand has given some sort of a nod that she's considering retirement. Um, I just wanted to inform the board that three town administrators um, are sending a letter off to Joan, um, silly as we are about it, asking her to reconsider. Um, until you've worked with a superintendent that is not good, you have no idea what it's like and you have no appreciation for what it's like to work with one that is as good as Joan is. Um, so um, just so you know, um, that's the word on the street, but we're gonna be sending a, a letter off and speaking to her individually about trying to get her to, to consider staying on a little longer. And are her thoughts uh, about this, the end of the school year? That, that would be her end of her contract. Oh, what, and what, yeah. when's her contract end? Well, she needed to notify them um, now because I think her contract is at the end of June. Yeah. Of this coming school year, yeah. okay. Um, May I? Yeah. If, as long as you're talking about that, um, I think that <clears throat> I, I think she's decided to leave. She's obviously announced that to someone. I think that's a, a nice gesture, if nothing else. Um, <clears throat> and um, and I've worked real closely with um, with Superintendent Landers uh, the last five years on the billing committee uh, project, mostly, but. Um, all I can say is I can't tell you how many times I've heard her say, but this is for the kids. Mm -hmm. This is for the kids. And I've never seen anyone as focused on the goal of doing things for the children in the district. And and I just want to go on record as saying um, thank you and it's, it's much appreciated. To, to piggyback on that quickly, Sue, I have been around superintendents that have also said those words. And no sooner are they... Uh, off their lips, you can tell that it's not really as sincere uh -huh. as you would want it to be. With Joan, you never get that sense. So, no. um, we do have Deputy Chief Sartell will be beginning um, next Monday. He was in today to finalize paperwork, and um, we're expecting his first day um, officially on duty uh, in shop next Monday. Awesome. Great. And just a, a quick shout out to the North Middlesex Regional School District Marching Band and Color Guard. Mm -hmm. Um, very, very strange, I know, to, to hear that brought up. Um, my, my girls are in color guard for Oakmont, and uh, I travel to the competitions to watch them, and I get to see North Middlesex perform, and they're extraordinary. Um, I, I don't know who the leadership is that is responsible for the, the, the direction and the choreography and, and all of the things that come with it, but they are, they are really outstanding, and I think um, speak very, very well to the district. So um, shout out to them. They've, they've won some medals uh, in the last probably month, six weeks in the tournaments that I've been to. Great. And then the one last, last thing I promise is um, just a, a, a public nod of, of thanks and appreciation to the board for the consideration and extension of my contract. Um, I, I know it's, it's never an easy decision to make 
um, when things are smooth. Um, it's all the more difficult a decision to make when there might be people that would disagree with it. Um, and Sue, so particularly, I know that um, you didn't agree with the length, and, and I respect that. Um, I do want to thank you publicly, however, for recognizing the what I think is the symbolic importance, if nothing else, of three signatures on a document. So thank you for that. Well, I mean, that's, that's, um, that's how I was always taught. Majority of the board votes. Everybody else supports it. Appreciate that. So thank you. That's all I have. Any other board members have any updates? So will be first, Madam Chairman. Um, I just want to mention, uh, talking about the high school, I had the pleasure of going to their um, production the other night of Godspell in the new Theater Arts, Theater Performing Arts Center. Um, it, it, they, they will blow your minds away. You've got to go and see one of those productions. These these young people are so super talented. Um, it, it, it it was wonderful, absolutely wonderful, um, and I, I can't tell you enough about how how much of a pleasure it was to go there. Uh, please don't forget any time you see anything coming up, it's worth going to. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to ask about was I've gotten some questions about the paperwork for the towing and um, auto body? Yes. Is the, is the paperwork gone out yet? No, I actually, through the chair if I could address it, um, I actually did get a communication from one of the uh, the current tow operators today and I, um, I reached out to assure him that there is no deadline that's soon upon us because it's not officially been released yet. I was out most of the week last week. Um, so my expectation is that um, if not tomorrow, probably uh, more likely Wednesday, the um, request proposals for the public authority towing will go out. And I did assure that vendor, um, who's one of our longtime vendors, that there would be a 30-day window within which to respond. So there wasn't going to be a, a <coughs> so quick So there's not a like hit. a, because I Nothing thought there pending. was a date already. Yeah, that was a, that was a draft. Um, I reported out at the last meeting that I, I did circulate a draft to our two current vendors to give them the benefit of seeing what the paperwork looked like and let me know if we had missed anything. By we, I mean me. Um, and they did tell me that I had missed something because there was a provision that would have required them to be able to do certain roadside services. And um, they, they said that that's not something they had ever done and, and um, that was changed. So the final edit uh, will reflect that that bullet point is no longer there, but I expect that will be going out. In terms of the body work and then the mechanical work, those should be probably within the next couple of weeks, those will be out too. They're, they're in draft on my uh, on my desktop, um, but I expect that they'll be out in short order. But no, nothing, nothing with a pending deadline. Thank you. Okay, any other updates? Madam Chairman, no. Thank you for asking. Okay, great. All right, and I'm gonna pass on, on, on my updates as well. Um, the next on our agenda is 5.3, approve the meeting minutes for October 17th. And that looks like that was an executive session. Yeah, both regular it's and both. executive. Oh, regular and executive, I'm missing yeah, The regulars will look like the agenda. I'm looking for it, where is it? It must be attached to this paper clip. Uh, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm pretty, I'll probably have it. I'll keep your, if I'll we need to know. It has the number 5.3 on, on it. Five three, there it is. Okay, so we have a regular meeting and executive session. Do we need to release the executive session is it, or just approve it? it? Approve and release? The, this is executive, executive session two. So executive session two would be able to um, be both approved and released. This would be um, when you went into contract negotiations with me okay. at the last okay. meeting. Okay, so can we take them separately? Because I think there is a small edit on, on one of them that needs to happen. Okay. Um, I move that the board approve the meeting minutes, the regular meeting minutes for October 17, 2017. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous and that we've approved the regular meeting minutes for October 17. And do you want to call this num not part two? I think that'd be fair, yeah because there were two issues and this is the only one that's able to be released. So that's one of the edits. Uh, 
I move that the board approve the executive session part two minutes for October 17, 2017 with one addition on the second page, the first paragraph, automobile stipend to equal the current, the word current should be yep. um, inserted there, supervisory union contract. So it should say, the parties next discussed adjusting the automobile stipend to equal the No, then, no. and then the next sentence, uh, Cindy Clark, yeah. <coughs> Cindy King <laughs> motioned to adjust the automobile stipend to oh. equal the current supervisory oh, union okay. contract. Remember, we had okay. that discussion. Yep. I believe the contract actually makes that clear. I'm just going to check. Yeah, it, I think it does, but I just, just wanted, wanted the minutes minute. to reflect okay. that discussion. Anybody have any other thoughts on that? So that was my motion. Okay. Corey, do you see, is there anything else? Just give me a moment this last minute. Check here. Sorry. No, that's fine. Take it Looking at her right now. Also, remember, Gordy, us bringing that one up? I don't, but I, I think it's good to always clean up language, so thank you for that. But it's just that one word makes a huge difference if sometimes someone will catch something that someone else doesn't. So thank you for that. Appreciate it. Actually, it's even tighter than that because it just specifies the amount, okay. which is the current. So we're good. That's fine. And that's it. Uh, the, that's Effective July 1st, 2019. It's the, it's the amount that is equal to the current supervisory mm -hmm. contract. Okay. So do we, We're good. as is, the word, adding the word current in front of supervisory is perfect. Right. Thank you. Because for I patience. believe we have that discussion too. Yep. Is that a second? It is a second. Okay. Thank you. All, all those in favor of. Uh, oh, and to release them too. Yes. To approve uh, with edits and release the executive session meeting minutes part two for October 17th. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye yes. All right, I think, yeah, we did that. Okay, unanimous. All right. So next we have 5.4. Now, it's Monday. We don't have the bills payable warrants yet, but um, I, we can probably still do the motion to review and sign them when they come in tomorrow afternoon. Absolutely. Uh, I move that the board review and sign the bills payable warrants when available. Out of session. Out of session. Second. All those in favor? No. No? No. You two of people. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, it's passed. Okay. We're Thank gonna you. Do I, I think there's a task for me in that no somewhere. The, the, yes, I'm sure <laughs> you guys can figure that one out, but we'll, we'll make we'll get the bills paid this week, no problem. <laughs> Great. Okay, entertain a motion to adjourn. Can I ask a question first? Sure. Um, I understood that where public communication is concerned, okay. it's at the chair's discretion, mm -hmm. but I also remember reading that any member of the board may ask someone in the public to be recognized. It, it, no, uh, tonight I'm going to just, we're not going to have public communication without the chair recognizing them. Madam Chair? Yes. If that were to a vote, I'd be in the negative on that, so. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn at, hmm, 7.58? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Sydney. So we'll let everyone know your constituents. <laughs> and we will be meeting. We will not have next Tuesday. Next Tuesday is the election. Please, everybody, vote. And then our next meeting will be on the 14th. I know.